this is Sadie Boulay and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. I want to give a big shout out to our awesome Black American family for sticking together on this issue to do with this woman in Jamaica. This woman who they call the Barefoot Mountain Lady boasted that she would not rent her property to Black Americans because Black Americans are problematic. And she has not specified what they do, but she has thrown all the shade that she could on Black Americans. Now, before anybody mistakenly think that I'm saying that she's lying, I'm not. I'm saying that there are some Black Americans who would do that, just like there's any other race of people who do that. My problem with her is that she started out by saying Black Americans across the board, Black Americans, as if every Black American race has been there and has done something problematic to her property. I have a problem with that because she did not specify who the group was. We don't know what they did. She just said black Americans. Now every varmint that could has come in to her rescue. A lot of people have come in. Oh yeah, she's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. It doesn't matter that other people are complaining about the scamming and the price gouging that's going on with her business. Many people have decided that she's telling the truth. But there's no way that anybody could know that she's telling the truth without having all of the facts and hearing the other people's side of the story. We really still don't know what these black Americans have done. She just said they were problematic. Shout out to the Jamaicans who have come into the comment section and added their opinion and given a, and given a little bit of context about this woman because everybody's not fooled by her. But I want to thank black Americans because this is really not about these people caring about whether or not this woman is telling the truth. This is about the haters of black Americans and a lot of white people. And you can tell because they really won't put their face in, in their profile. Many white people have come in and co-signed her as well as many Jamaicans. They like to see this kind of thing going on among black people because that ensures that there will be no unity. But I don't care how many of them co-sign what she's saying. I'm standing by what I said. If she wants to call out a certain group of black Americans, that's absolutely fine. But when she says that she won't rent to any black American, not that I have any intention of going down there to rent from her. And I'm sure that many black Americans feel exactly as I do. But when she says I won't rent to any black Americans. That's a whole new angle that is insidious. It is condescending and it is divisive. That is one of the most divisive mindsets that any black person can have. There is a way to call out black people by other blacks if they're doing something wrong. But when you come in and blanketly say that black Americans, all black Americans, and then you try to back it up by saying, my best friend is a black American or only two black Americans behave properly. What that says is this is the same thing that white people do after they've done all of the damage. They've, they've said everything that they could to, to basically bury you. Then they turn around and say, I have black friends. This is exactly what she's doing. She's no better than a white supremacist. And I will continue to speak on p issues about people like this. As I said before, there is a way for black people to call out other black people when they're doing things that's wrong. Case in point, there is a YouTuber named Jay Cameron. Jay Cameron is operating in Ghana. A lot of black Americans are going back to Africa. And by the way, Africa is the big dreamland. Ain't nobody going to Jamaica. Not for real. Black Americans are running to Africa. Africa, there's like kids in a candy shop. They're going to Africa, all different countries. And as we interact more and more with each other, we are going to have to develop a system of engagement. Ghana has sort of become the homecoming headquarters for Black Americans. So a lot of Black Americans are vacationing in Ghana, thinking about moving to Ghana, operating in Ghana, doing business in Ghana. And Jay Cameron came on his show and said that 
there, there's price gouging going on in Ghana, just like there is in Jamaica. They don't have a set price. They're going to change the price around based on who it is. And they often want to jack the price up on black Americans for the reason that some of them think that black Americans have money. Some do and some don't. But price gouging is wrong. So as you can see in this title, he says, moving to Ghana, beware of these car dealer and landlord schemes. So there are schemes going on, which is, a mo which is mostly about price gouging, changing the price of things once they find out that the the buyer is a black American. And so he didn't just say the Ghanaians. He pointed out the perpetrators. He gave the name of the car dealership and the address. And then he said, we're going to find a car dealership in Ghana, in Accra, because they're in the capital city. We're going to find a car dealership where we can get a fair price for a car. But that's the way you do it. You call out the person who did it and tell the location and give all the information about that person so other people can be aware. You don't just get up and say all of the that the Ghanaians are scammers or Ghanaians are price gougers because all Ghanaians didn't do that. And so he fingered the people who did it. And that's the way it should be done. So there were many people that were in agreement with this woman, this mountain woman who said that black Americans were problematic. And again, without knowing anything else, they agreed with her. And these people have a gripe with black Americans that has nothing to do with what happened in Jamaica with this woman's property. There are those in the Caribbean who think they're in competition with black Americans and they're not. We're in competition with the people in the United States who are citizens. Black Americans are much more numerous. There's a much larger number there's much larger number and we have a much higher profile in the world than Jamaicans, even though Jamaicans are wonderful. Jamaicans were recently complaining with some of the African leaders because they put a lot of emphasis on black Americans when they're talking about the transatlantic slave trade, when they're talking about the year of return in Ghana, they put a lot of emphasis on black Americans. And for the reason that we are a large number and we are Americans and America is still the superpower in the world. And that's our association. It is what it is. And then there were the white people who were jumping on the bandwagon talking about, yeah, she's right. Yeah, they tell the truth. Yeah, you're just making excuses. Yeah, she's telling the truth. They don't know a damn thing about what this woman is talking about, but they jumped on that bandwagon. But there are specific reasons why white people are mad at black people. For instance, they are mad because slavery ended. They are mad because slavery ended and they had to go to work for themselves. And in that slave system, even if they didn't own any slaves, they benefited from that system and they had power over those slaves just on the basis of their skin tone. So they, they, they are angry about that. They won't admit it, but yes, they are angry because slavery ended. They are mad because the 14th Amendment gave black people citizenship and the 15th Amendment gave black people the right to vote. When you can't vote, you have no power at all. So they're mad about that. They're mad because the schools integrated. They're mad because the miscegenation laws ended and black people can marry white people and white people can marry black people. They're mad about that because look at what's happening with their numbers. They're at a 0% birth rate. So their numbers are dwindling and white women who are really holding the cards are running off with black men and Asians and Hispanics and everybody they want to. But they're blaming it on black people because we are the most vocal. They are mad because we compete and we win. They're mad because Serena Williams is the number one tennis player. They're mad because Simone Biles is the number one gymnast. These are things that black people are not supposed to do in their minds. So they're mad at us about this. They are mad because of Black Lives Matter. They want you to say all lives matter, even though black people are the ones being slaughtered in the streets. So they're mad about that. They're mad about reparations. How dare you ask to be paid for 250 years of free labor where your family was not able to build any wealth and every generation had to start from scratch? How dare you think that you should be able to recover the wages that your ancestors lost? They are mad because... Black people don't give up and we don't give in. And guess what else they're mad about? They are mad because Halle Bailey, this little cute girl from Texas, is playing a fictional character 
in the movies. So they're mad about that. So when you got a Uncle Tom, like this woman in Jamaica, coming out here making a blanket statement about black Americans, yes, they're going to back her up. Because this is their chance to get back at you for all of the things they're mad about. Oh, yeah, she's telling the truth. No matter if white people, Asian people, and every other person in the world that goes down there can tell you that this woman is not on the up and up, they're going to support her. Because she's talking about black Americans, and this is their chance to get a free shot off on black Americans, and they're going to take it because, after all, she's black too. There are black Americans who wouldn't do anything to hurt anybody. But those black Americans never get talked about because that clouds the negative image that everybody wants to have about black Americans. And yes, I'm going to talk about this. We need to talk about this. We have to stand up for ourselves. Now, I want to say this once and for all. I am not disputing what this woman said. I'm not saying that black Americans didn't go down to her place and do something she didn't like. But what I'm saying is 40 million black Americans haven't been down into Jamaica doing anything to this woman or her property. That's what I'm saying. And it is wrong for her to paint that picture like that, even if she tries to clean it up by saying her best friend is black American. I doubt that very seriously. I doubt it. So anyway, that's what I want to say. And I'm going to keep on talking about it because they are saying that it's black Americans and one lady says, well, yeah, black Americans are doing this. And who's going to check her? Well, I'm going to tell you who's going to check her. Let's look at this. This article appeared in Travel Awaits on May 22nd. And it says the U.S. State Department advises reconsidering travel to Jamaica. Why the warning is needed. Now, this is a level three warning. There are four levels of warning. Level one is that you take normal precautions when you're in a foreign country. Level two, you take extra caution in a, in, a, in a foreign country. Level three, you reconsider traveling to that country. And a level four says don't go. In Jamaica, it says reconsider traveling to Jamaica. Let's see why they're warning Americans to reconsider traveling. In other words, it's not advisable for you to go to Jamaica. Let's see what they're saying. Let's see, what, let's see why. In Jamaica, the department warned Violent crimes such as home invasions, armed robberies, sexual assaults, and homicides are common and said sexual assaults occur frequently, including at all-inclusive resorts. The department added local police do not respond effectively to serious criminal incidents. A do not travel advisory was issued for several areas on the island including downtown Kingston. A similar advisory was issued for Columbia. But here we have a travel advisory from the United States State Department telling Americans to not travel to Jamaica. Now, this has nothing to do with what black Americans are doing on that island. It has to do with what Jamaicans are doing. And when they're talking about home invasions, armed robberies, homicides. They're telling you it's not even safe to go down there yet. And still, she has put her teeth in black Americans' backs and saying black Americans don't know how to behave. Well, apparently they don't know how to behave either. You know, you have to be careful. You know, when you're living in a glass house, you shouldn't be throwing stones. But these situations with the pot calling the kettle black, they're always interesting when they come back on the person that's throwing out allegations against somebody else. We have to push back on the BS. We are one of the groups of people that when one person does something, we all get convicted. Remember when OJ was accused of double homicide? All of us felt the heat from that. We were all guilty and we didn't even know the folk, but because he did it and he's black, we were all guilty. So we're always going to wear that stigma and that's how come we have to fight back against it. So it's important for us to stand in the gap for each other when we can and not be so quick to shame and blame because what we know is that black people are not perfect, but neither is anybody else. So if the State Department is issuing a travel advisory warning Americans to reconsider even going to Jamaica, that means that there's something going on down there that they are doing that's not right. 
So I want to thank you. And let's continue to stick together. We have to call each other out. When we do something wrong, it's not wrong with calling it out. But you don't call the whole group out. You don't call 40 million black people out for what a few did. And all of these people who are claiming that she's right are people who have an ax to grind with black Americans that has nothing to do with what happened in Jamaica with this woman. So let's just kind of call the thing a thing and recognize an enemy when we see one. These people are enemies of black Americans. We haven't done anything to them. We have not done anything to them. But they're operating on stereotypes. They're operating on their own degenerate system and their own hatred. Because if people can't see anything wrong with what she said, then they don't know right from wrong anyway. And so if black Americans going to be called out, Jamaicans need to be called out, just like the State Department did. But okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.